Hey, horror fans, once again, it is me, the Horror Miser. My name is time to review the final film in the Fear Street trilogy. It is Fear Street Part 3, 1666. Yes. Now, Fear Street, film Fear Street Part 3, 1666 is a 2021 American supernatural horror film. It was directed by Lee Janiak. It was written by Phil, uh, let's see, Grandizia, Lee Janiak, and Kate Treefree. Now, the film stars Kenia Madeira. Ashley Zuckerman, Julian Jacobs, Oliver Scott Welsh. Now, in this final film, the origins of Sierra Fierce Curse are finally revealed as history comes full circle on a night that changes the lives of Shady Siders forever. Yes, this is the final film in this excellent film, horror film trilogy. Now, when it comes to trilogies and films, horror films do not have a good track record, track record with them. Before Scream 4 came out, Scream was considered to be one of the successful trilogies of horror films. Basically, we had a nice uh, beginning, middle, and end, even though a lot of people did not like Scream 3. But that was, you know, everyone considered that to be a great horror trilogy because we had a you know, beginning, a middle part, and a conclusion of the story even before Scream 4 came out. But before that came out, Scream was considered to be one of the most successful horror trilogies because when you look at the third film in, in the horror film series, such as Hostel Part 3, Blade Trinity, and Creepshow 3, those films don't have what made the first two films great, let alone good horror movies. Uh, there was a lot of problems with Blade Trilogy, uh, but mainly because I know there was a lot of back and forth between... There was a lot of back and forth between Leslie Snipes and the director of the film. There was a lot of back and forth between that. That's the reason why that wasn't successful. Um... House of Part 3 was a bit of a letdown, way of a letdown, considering how good the first two movies were. And uh, even though I haven't seen Creepshow 3, a lot of people said Creepshow 3 was simply terrible. And uh, that's one of the problems that we have. And also, I think one of the best examples of this is uh, the uh, now... I know what you did last summer. The first two films were pretty good, but the third one, I always know what you did last summer, was completely terrible. I think one of the problems when you have when it comes to horror trilogies or the third one, such as that, uh, obviously that film, I always know what you did last summer, has nothing to basically, as all different actors, really has nothing to do with the first two movies, only except is that we see the fishermen. He's in this one, and then they decide to put a supernatural uh, twist to that. It really didn't make any sense. So that's one of the problems that you have when it comes to trilogies and horror films. They really don't know what to do in the third part of the films. It's just like there's a continuity issues. There's always something wrong. Something doesn't fit. It could be that there's a different director. There could be a different uh, actor. So it could be anything. But that's one of the problems when it comes to horror films and trilogies. Other than Scream... We really haven't had that many successful trilogies in horror films. However, after watching the final chapter in the Fear Street trilogies, I'm here to say that this is not only an excellent horror trilogy, this is one of the best trilogies I've seen in films since Back to the Future. And that's saying a lot because we all know how good Back to the Future was. This series has a great opening beginning. We have a great uh, middle and then we have a great final concluding chapter of the series just like how great back to the future was this one is just as good if not even better than back to the future yes i'm not kidding i'm going there uh picking up right where we left off on part two dina now sees herself back in 1666 in union that was the name of the town before it was split in half between shadyside and sunnyville now basically she is seeing the events that took place through the eyes of Sarah Field as we learn what happened to the town and how the curse was started. I thought there was a great idea how to do that. So basically uh, Dita can learn. So basically what we see here is basically what the film is going to do in this particular aspect is that can Dina learn the truth about what happened to Sarah and still save her girlfriend Samantha who is still possessed in 1994. Now, I truly cannot say enough about how good this final chapter was as Lee and her team did such an excellent job of putting this final chapter together. Uh, it's basically what you just expect in this movie because just as how good as part two was, part three puts everything together and ties it up in a nice little bow. That's how much I enjoyed this film. The one thing I really did like 
was using the same actors that was in the first and second film and put them in the final film. I thought that was a good idea is just having different actors in this one because it gives credence to the roles of what they're playing. Yes, uh, even though that's the same actress that was in the first movie, we see her in this one playing Sarah, and even though we see we, we think of her as Dina, we actually see her as Sarah, but I think that really le reads, leads credence to the role because it gives sort of a nice weight because we're familiar with the actor, we're familiar with the character, and it gives kind of weight. I don't know if we would have the same type of payoff if there was a different actress playing this type of role or any of the other uh, characters who are playing different roles in part three. I don't know if it would have had the same type of effect if we had all different actors playing this roles. But there is one caveat, and I'll say that later on. No, Keanu Maria Madeira really shines as Sarah Fear. Uh, we see Sarah as a strong, protective, and caring woman who loves her brother and will do anything for her father. We find out that uh, her mother left the family when she was young, and now she's become sort of the protector. She does everything for her family. And I think that shows you what a great character Sarah was. Now, just like in the first film, she and Olivia Scott Welsh, who plays Hannah in this one, have great chemistry together. You really care what happens to Sarah and Hannah. It's kind of sad to what happens between the two and what causes the hysteria in the town, because that's basically what we saw back in this time period. Uh, but we really do care what happens to them. And again, it's mainly because we know these characters, we know these actors, and we know these characters, and we care about them. We feel sorry for what's happening to them. Now, everything comes full circle in this one as troops are revealed about how the curse started and how it affected the town of Union. I like how uh, stuff that we saw in the beginning of the film and during the second part of the film, we see everything, uh, all the events that took place, what happened to Sarah, you know, uh, how the town became cursed, uh, basically how maybe how the town was split in half because of what happened to uh, what happened because of the curse. Everything comes full circle in this particular one. I really like how the writers kept all the continuity together so it makes all sense and didn't really change anything. Now, while the truth about the curse may be cliche, and I said, well, you know, that's kind of what you expect. But, so I really had no problem with it because it fits perfectly with the story that Lee and her writing team have crafted here. Yeah, it's all about greed and power and wealth and money, but that's what people do when they make deals with the devil. Now, of course, everything wraps up, uh, if the ending wraps up everything with a final showdown and conclusion that I should say should satisfy everyone who has enjoyed this film. Just like with how Back to the Future concluded, this ends the same way, and I was very happy and pleased about what they did with the uh, conclusion, how everything ended. And I truly did love this, love this film. I truly love this trilogy, and everyone involved did a fantastic job from the acting, the pacing, the writing, and of course the practical effects. They had no problems uh, with who they killed in this particular one, as we see uh, how the first killing started in this particular film, and how that carries over throughout the rest of the town. And I thought that was perfectly fit of how they how they did it. Uh, I believe this is one of the best horror trilogies I've seen, and this definitely will be on my top ten best list of horror movies of 2021 in my popular saying enough said <laughs> yeah I really love this one guys now I have been kinda of struggling back and forth because I really don't give out all five of my bloody gold coins it's I think I've only might have given it to maybe two or three films I, I kinda of, I really didn't backtrack to see uh, how many times I've given out all five of my bloody gold coins but this definitely will get five all five of my bloody gold points. Yes, I truly love the crap out of this movie. It's a fantastic movie. It's fantastic story, story hmm, storytelling. I'll get this right right now. I mean, the acting, the practical effects, uh, how how well the movie is paced, uh, how it how it um, brings everything together, and then we finally get the conclusion of how the mystery, how the mystery is going to resolve and how Dean is going to uh, save Sam from being possessed. Everything falls into place and that's basically how you want a story to be. You know, you have a nice beginning, which was good. Like I said, part one was pretty good. Not great, but pretty good, but at least it starts the story off right. Then we really get to the heart of the story about what happens in part two and then you have a satisfying conclusion in the third one. That's how you want to have a trilogy. You have fantastic characters, you have fantastic writing, you have great direction, you have some great practical effects. 
effects. I'm pretty sure a lot of people wanted to see more people kill, but I think you really don't want to do that because you want to make how the people are killed mean something, and you really don't need to have everyone else killed. So I thought that's the reason why they did what they did, and that was a great way to do it. And I truly love this film. That's why it gets five of uh, my bloody gold coins. So there you have it. That is my review and video of Fear Street Part 3, 1666. I hope you did enjoy it. It did give them a thumbs up, like, and share, because it does help out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, uh, since it's also playing on Netflix as well, have you seen the third chapter of this fantastic trilogy? Please leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me what you thought about the whole entire series. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser of Money G, and always remember that horror rules. <laughs> I'll see you in my next video. I'm out.